Hi everyone, hope you all must be doing great. So this is the third lecture of salary revision and we have already covered some of the perquisites in our earlier class. Now let's discuss the remaining part of perquisites and then we'll move to retirement benefits. So we were discussing, we have already discussed credit card facility, club and gym facility. Now this is the turn for use of assets, use of employer's asset. This is page number 3.19. Can come to page number 3.19. Okay, so let's start with this perquisite. So let's say if the employee is using any of the employer asset, if the employee is using any of the employer asset, if they are have given, the employer has given that okay, you are an employee, you can use this asset, and uh, we will we can take it back also. This is not a permanent transfer. This is a temporary for temporary purpose. They have given it to use till the time that that particular person is working with our company, you can use it. If you will resign, then you have to give it back. So this is a temporary transfer. So if you use any asset of your employer, then it becomes a perquisite. It becomes a perquisite, right? So first of all, please remember that rent free accommodation will not be covered over here because if you are using uh, immovable property like rent free accommodation or concessional rent accommodation, that perquisite value, we know how to calculate it. We have already uh, discussed that, right? Second thing is that if you are using motor car, if you are using car of um, uh, car, which is provided by employer, that again will not be covered over here because we understand how we will value motor car perquisite, which we have already done in our last lecture, right? So two things, RFA is not covered over here because we know how to compute RFA. Motor car facility is not covered, will not be covered over here because we understand how the valuation will be done for motor car perquisite. Third thing which you should remember, if employer will provide you with computers or laptops so that you can use it at your home, actually this is not a benefit. Why employer gives you laptop, you can take your laptop or computer to your home so that he can anytime call you early in the morning or late at night, he can call you and say, your boss will call you and say, please make this presentation, please make this report. So if computer or laptop is provided to you, please don't take it as a perquisite. It is not a benefit. It is not a benefit. In fact, it is a pain, right? So if computer and laptop would be provided to you, the tax, taxable value of the perquisite will be nil. Please don't take it as a perquisite. It is not a perquisite. The taxable value will be nil. Okay, these three things clear. Here I'm not talking about RFA. Here I'm not talking about motor car facility because both this perquisite, we understand how we'll do the valuation. For computers and laptop, the perquisite value would be nil. Other than that, if any other asset which is provided to you, let's say during summers, uh, employer provides you with an air conditioner or any piece of furniture uh, they, they provide you so that you can use it. If you will resign, then you can give it back. So in that case, this becomes perquisite. How much is the perquisite value? So it depends the asset which has been given to you. Let's say air conditioned or any other furniture which has given to you, whether this asset is owned by the employer or they have hired it from somewhere. So if it is owned by the employer, we understand 10% of the actual cost. Actual cost means original cost, not written down. Value. Got it? 10% of the actual cost. And if it is hired by the employer, then actual higher charge is simple, easy, right? And of course, if any amount is recovered from the uh, employee, then you can subtract that. So if it is owned by the employer, 10% of actual cost minus any amount recovered, hired by the employer, higher charges minus any amount recovered. Use of motor car, we have already covered. Computer and laptop is a tax-free perquisite. I believe that you, you will remember that computers and laptop is a tax free perquisite. They have given it for use. They have not given you permanently. Permanently is something which is sold to you. That is a separate perquisite. Okay, let's understand that also. If any asset is sold to the employee, you understand? Employees purchasing any asset from their company, from their employer, then also it can become a perquisite. How? If employee gets any benefit out of it. Let's say employer says, that we have a computer, we have certain computers and they um, offers to their employee that whosoever would like to purchase these computers, you can purchase it just for rupees 2000 by paying 2000. The company has purchased, let's say the company has purchased these computers for rupees 1 lakh. Let's say there is a computer. There is a computer. 
which was purchased on let's say first june 2021 the company the employer has purchased this computer the employer has purchased this computer for rupees 1 lakh this was purchase date and they have started using this computer put to use date is why i am referring to put to use date you understand that we charge depreciation from the date when it is put to use so this computer was put to use from let's say 15th of september 2021 right this was the date when it was put to use so they have used this computer they were using this com this computer on let's say 15th of july 2023 this is our previous year previous year 23 24 this computer is now it's a brand new computer or it's an old computer it's an old computer right we are using it since 20, uh, september 2021 it's an old computer now almost one or two years old now we are giving this this computer was a very high tech computer of rupees one lakh let's say computer or laptop whatever it is now we are selling this computer now company is saying that we don't want this computer if any of the employees interested you can purchase this computer and we will give it to you for just rupees 10,000 for just rupees 10,000 please tell me will you be interested in purchasing this computer I think yes why because this is a computer which was worth of rupees 1 lakh although it is quite a old computer now the employer has used this computer or any of the employers employee must have used must be using this computer but still this computers look like brand new looks not even brand new but looks like new it was not that depreciated so it was not there was no not much wear and tear of this computer so you think that it is a sufficient a good computer let's let us purchase this computer so you are purchasing it for rupees ten thousand rupees so tell me how much benefit you have received out of it sir this was a computer of one lakh and you have purchased it for ten thousand so ninety thousand is the benefit no ninety thousand is not the benefit but you have to see how much is the worth of this computer right now. So when you are purchasing it on this date, on this date, when you are purchasing it, you will see how much is the worth of this computer. So you, what you will do, you will be computing its depreciated value. You will be computing its depreciated value. So whatever is the depreciated value, let's say depreciated value comes to rupees. Let's say I'm just randomly saying it comes to rupees 40,000. So the worth of this computer right now is 40,000 and how much you are paying for this computer 10,000 So 30,000 is the benefit. This will become the perquisite value, right? So if the worth of the computer is 40,000 and if you are paying 40, then the benefit would be zero because you are paying what the worth of the computer was, right? Sometimes it, you can also ask, sir, if the depreciated value of the computer is 40,000 and we are paying 50. First of all, why you are paying 50? No one will pay uh, more amount. But still, I can imagine that someone is paying a higher amount. So in that case, is employee getting any benefit? No, sir. In that case, employee is in a loss. So what will happen to this loss? Nothing. So there is no perquisite value. You will not say the perquisite is negative. No, we will say there is no perquisite value. If you are paying less, then there would be a perquisite value. Got it? Sir, you have just mentioned that when computers and laptops are provided, it's a tax-free perquisite. I have said that use of computer or laptop, that is on temporary basis. But here, this example which I, I am referring to here is that computer or laptop has been sold to you permanently, right? Temporary use, tax-free perquisite, but whenever, when, whenever any of the asset is sold to you, then it becomes a perquisite provided you get any benefit out of it. So how you will calculate the benefit? Simple, will you Perquisite will be the written down value of the asset. That means the worth of the asset right now and how much you are paying for that asset. And if you are paying less, then there would be a perquisite. But if you are paying more, then this value will be negative. Then there will be no perquisite. We will not say the perquisite is, perquisite is negative. We will say the perquisite value is zero. Got it? Now the question might arise that how we will calculate this written down value. Easy. You have to calculate their depreciate value. So for depreciation, we have a special rate of depreciation, which are different from PGPP. Please don't say that in PGPP, we charge depreciation at 40%. No, PGPP rates are different. 
these rates which I am telling you, it is only for the purpose of calculating the written down value for perquisites valuation. Only for perquisites valuation, right? So if you are purchasing computers or laptops or any data storage device, the rate of depreciation is 50% by WDV method. WDV method we also known as SLM method. Sorry, uh, WDV method is also known as reducing balance method or diminishing balance method, right? So if computers and laptops you are purchasing, 50%, apply 50% rate Depre on WDV method by using WDV method. If you are purchasing cars, apply 20% rate, same WDV method, or we can say reducing balance, diminishing balance method, any name, right? But if you are purchasing any asset, which is not computers, not cars, if you are purchasing any other asset, the depreciation rate will be 10% and that too on straight line method. Please remember for other assets, the method will be of depreciation will be straight line, but for computers, laptops or cars, the rate of the method of depreciation is WDV method, correct? So you have to remember these depreciation rate, special depreciation rate specifically for valuing the perquisites, not for PGBP. I understand for computers and laptops and PGB, we have 40% for cars, we have 15%, right? But here, these rates are special rates only for the purpose of perquisites, getting it. Okay. So from the question arises from when you have to calculate depreciation from which date till which, which date from the date of purchase, you tell me from the date of purchase or from the date of put to use. So from the date of put to use, we understand because we have done PGB also, we know that whenever the asset is put to use, from that date we charge depreciation. So from the date of put to use, you have to charge depreciation up to the date when you are purchasing it. So from 15th of September till 15th of July, calculate the period. So we will say, sir, from 15th, how we'll calculate the period? Now you should also know that. So from 15th September 2021, one year will be till 14th of September 2022. Okay, this is one year complete. Okay, next from 15th of September 2022. Are we going till 14th September 2023? No, we have purchased it before that. So from 15th September 2022, this is only can go till 15th of July. 2023 because we are not going till uh, we are not completing this year. So this year is not fully completed. This year is just part of the year. So part of the year you have to ignore it. You have to only take those years which are actually completed. Only completed years you have to take part of the year you have to ignore. Right. So only one year depreciation will be charged over here. So tell me which asset it was. It was computer. So one year depreciation would be 50 percent. 50 percent. So on one lakh. 50% depreciation would be 50,000. So how much is the written down value after depreciation? 1 lakh minus 50, 50,000 is the written down value. For how much you are purchasing? 10,000. So you are getting a benefit. You are purchasing at lower value. 40,000 would be the value of the perquisite, right? Let's say if this would have been not from 21, let's say it would have been from 2020. So there would be two years which would be completed, right? So two years depreciation would will be for first year it would be 50,000 you have to take for computers and laptops and for cars you have to take which uh, method WDV method so written down value would come 50,000 1 lakh minus first year depreciation 50 it would be 50 second year the depreciation rate be, would be again 50 percent for computers and laptops so on 50,000 you will charge depreciation 25,000 so the WDV after two years will be 25,000. Let's say I'm assuming that if we have used this asset for two years and some part of the year, part of the year we'll ignore for two years. After two years, the WDV would be uh, 25,000 and how much you are paying? 10,000, 15,000 would have been the per user value in that case. Easy. Okay. So I've already mentioned that WDV shall be computed for each complete years. If there is any part of the year, please ignore that. Even if it is, let's say if it is five years, 11 months, please ignore that 11 month, only five years you should take. Part of the year shall be ignored. Okay, let's come to another perquisite that is medical facilities. 
if medical facility is provided to the employee or their family member then in, it can be exempt then it can be exempt i am saying it's it is not always exempt it can be exempt but yes if it is provided to other member other than family member i can say non family member right non family member i can say yes okay if they are other than family members in that case please make it 100% taxable then we will not see any of this condition so if the medical facility is provided by the employer to any other not to the employee the treatment the person who is uh, suffering from that disease or uh, the uh, person for whom we are giving that treatment facility is not the employee not their family member it is their non family member please make it 100% taxable am i clear i am clear on this point so examiner will confuse you he will give you some non family members please don't get confused make it fully taxable in that case so first of all let's see who are the family members simple family members will include spouse and children whether dependent or not dependent whether dependent or not dependent it will include spouse and children okay good enough second is parents brother and sister if they are dependent so parents and brother and sister will become family member only when if they are dependent if they are not dependent they will not become family member as per this definition and for them it would be taxable right only parents are covered are grandparents are covered in family members no so if examiner will give you such points he will say that employer has given uh, has given the facility of medical treatment to employee's grandfather please make it taxable right they have given it to for uh, to the treatment is happening of mother in law or father in law make it taxable they are not family members right as per this definition okay let's understand if the medical facility is given to employee or their family members then it could be exempt when this would be exempt so there are so it depends where the treatment is happening where the treatment is happening if it is happening at employer's hospital which is owned by the employer make it exempt any treatment but it is hap happening at employer's hospital listen when i am referring to hospital i am also including nursing home dispensary clinic etc right okay when i'll say hospital please include those also so if it is happening at employer's hospital make it fully taxable first sorry make it fully exempt only for employees and their family members if the treatment is taking place at government hospital except government hospital except third thing first thing is employer's hospital is exempt government hospital is exempt third thing is if it is happening at any other hospital which is approved by commissioner or chief commissioner of income tax third thing approved by commissioner or chief commissioner of income tax plus the treatment is only for the prescribed disease so third has two sub condition that hospital should be if it is not government hospital if it is not employer hospital for employer and government there is no problem for any treatment you can go uh, employee and family member tax free that would be exempt but if it is any other hospital but it is an approved hospital by commissioner or chief commissioner of income tax and plus the treatment which is taking place is for the specified disease specified disease here means life threatening disease like um, tuberculosis cancer hiv etc then you can keep it exempt right three things clear fourth thing if the treatment is for covid 19 if it is for covid 19 you can exempt it but yes there are few certain condition which are attached to covid 19 related treatment first is that you have to furnish covid 19 positive report that this person this family member is so suffering from covid 19 we have uh, the report also second thing the treatment should take place within 6 months from the date when this positive uh, covid 19 positive was determined was found right so the treatment should happen within 6 months and there should be a report of also so covid 19 uh, related treatment can happen if there is a positive report medical report should be there of covid 19 and necessary documents of covid 19 treatment within 6 months from the date of covid 19 positive right clear last thing is that we understand we did life insurance policy if employer spends the money on your life insurance policy life insurance is fully taxable life insurance is fully taxable but health insurance and health insurance has many names it can be it can come in uh, in your examination with any of the name 
So it could, could be your health insurance. Do you remember some other names of health insurance also? Yes, sir, we remember MediClaim insurance. Okay. MediClaim insurance. Do we have any other name also? No, sir, we have. Which one is accidental insurance? Different name, same thing. So if employer provides with health insurance, we can also call it as a MediClaim insurance or medical insurance or accidental insurance, one and the same thing. These are exempt purposes. Life insurance is fully taxable. Please remember, do not get confused. I'm telling you, don't make a mistake. Don't make a silly mistake in examination. Life insurance, fully taxable. Health insurance, medical insurance, accidental insurance can be can come with any name, but in the same thing, all, all exempt. Right? For whom? For whom employee is paying this health insurance? Employee or family members, both are covered. So whether it is for employee or their family members, and you understand who are family members, please make it exempt. For non-family members, it would be taxable. For father, father or mother, if they are dependent, then they will come under the definition of family member. If they are not, they will not be covering in the, uh, they will not be covered in the definition of family member as per this purpose. No, don't tell your father or mother that they are not family member. They're going to meet you. Okay. So as per this definition, if they are dependent, they will be in this definition. But if they are not dependent, they will not be in this definition for them. In that case, if they are not covered under this definition, make it taxable. Clear? Sweet and clear? Okay, so this is about medical facilities. Let me talk about the medical facilities which are happening outside India also. Let's say if there is any employee, employee or employee family member who is suffering, uh, who is suffering, and uh, their medical treatment is happening outside India. Then, if the employer is supporting us, if the employer is giving us the medical facilities which uh, the treatment is happening outside India, then also it could be exempt. First of all, tell me if the medical treatment is taking place outside India, let's say in US or any part of the globe outside India, then what all expenses are there? First of all, the main expenses of medical treatment, right? First expenses of medical treatment. Second expense is of uh, you have to go also outside India. So that is a traveling expense and you have to stay also. So one is staying expense and third is your traveling expense. So generally we can classify the expenses which will going to be there if the treatment is going is happening outside India. So one is the medical treatment. Medical treatment would be of patient of course. Medical treatment would be of patient. Stay stay who will stay patient will stay and will patient go will go alone no one attendant is allowed so patient plus one attendant is allowed will the entire family will go no they are not going on vacations so only one attendant is allowed if some other person is also going two or three people are going then they will be they will become taxable only one attendant is allowed if they can be exempt Traveling expenses, the so patient will go plus one attendant will go. No, sir, there are so many people who are going, they are not going on vacations. If they are going, make it fully taxable. Only for one attendant, it could be exempt. Okay. So medical treatment is exempt as per the RBI limit. As per the RBI limit. So let's say if uh, the employer is paying 3 lakh rupees. RBI, how you will calculate the RBI limit? You don't have to calculate it. It will be mentioned in your question. So let's say RBI limit says 2.5 lakh. So if the employer is providing you 3 lakh rupees and RBI limit says 2.5 lakh, then 50,000 will be taxable, right? Right. And if it is within RBI limit, then there is no problem and that you can exempt that. Because let's say if it is employer is paying you 2 lakh rupees and RBI limit says 2.4 lakh, then this is within RBI limit, then everything would be exempt. But if it is more than RBI limit, then that excess will be taxable. Getting it? No problem. Stay expenses. This is again as per the RBI limit. Same treatment as per RBI limit. 
ट्रैवलिंग एक्सपेंसेस इज इंपॉर्टेंट ट्रैवलिंग एक्सपेंसेस इंपॉर्टेंट इफ द ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम इफ द ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम आई एम नॉट सेइंग टोटल इनकम आई एम नॉट सेइंग इनकम अंडर दैट सैलरी आई एम रेफरिंग टू ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम इफ ग्रॉस टोटल इनकम ऑफ द एसएससी इज मोर देन इज मोर देन रुपीस 2 लाख देन all this traveling expenses will become taxable so it depends upon the gross total income of the employee if the gross total income of the ssc is more than 2 lakh then the entire traveling expenses will be taxable but if it is 2 lakh or less than 2 lakh then you can exempt the traveling expenses so there are three expenses which will be which we will be spending if the treatment is going to take place outside india these two expenses are as per the rva limit but traveling expense depend upon the gta of the assessee if it is more than 2 lakh make it fully taxable and if it is up to 2 lakh or less than 2 lakh please make it exempt got it treatment treatment expenses exempt up to rva limit stay expenses plus one attendant exempt up to rva limit traveling expenses depends upon gti i am not saying total income i am not saying income under the head salary i am saying gti what is gti all five heads plus clubbing and set off that that is gti before chapter 6 right this is gti okay now the next perquisite is ltc also known as leave travel concession you understand what is ltc ltc is given to the employee so that he or uh, she with their family members can visit places okay so first of all please understand that ltc could be exempt only under optional scheme if the assessee is following default tax regime i'm again repeating if the assessee is following default tax regime there is no exemption of ltc nothing no exemption of ltc so exemption is only in the case of optional tax regime i am again repeating ltc exemption is only in the case if the employee is following optional tax regime if the employee is following default tax regime please make the entire ltc taxable there would be no exemption clear okay so let's say the assessee is following optional tax regime so ltc is given so that you can travel you can travel within india you can travel with your family members so if the mode of travel is by air if the mode of travel is by air then the exemption could be up to the economy fare of the national carrier not business class if you are traveling by air it should be by economy fare of a national carrier national carrier we understand indian airlines or air india not indigo or any other airlines right it should be by national carrier So economy fare of the national carrier up to this limit it could be exempt but if you are traveling not by air by any other mode let's say you are traveling by train you are traveling by car you are traveling by any other mode if you are traveling by any other mode then we will see whether the place which uh, from where you have traveled till the place where uh, which is your destination from the origin or destination whether these both these places are connected by rails or not not whether they are connected by railways or not if you have traveled by any other mode if you have traveled by any other mode we will ask you whether these places which uh, your origin and destination are connected by rails and if the answer is yes if they are connected by rails then your exemption can go up to the first class rail fare first class rail fare right first class rail fare obviously first class is an ac rail ac right first class rail fare but if these places are not connected by rails let's say if these places let's say you have traveled from chennai you have traveled from chennai to somewhere in uttarakhand to some hilly areas and till certain place it was connected but after that you have to take bus or you have to take car but these places are not connected by rails right so if these places are not connected by rails then we will will ask you if not connected by rails is there any other recognized mode of transportation is there any other recognized mode of transportation is there we, uh, you will say yes sir there is another recognized mode of transport is there rails are not there but any other mode which is recognized is there then you have to take up to the first class fare of that mode first class fare of that mode but in case if there is no recognized mode of transport also no recognized mode means that till some place you have to go till bus after that you have to take a cab or a taxi after that you have to take a two wheeler after that you have to take a 
donkey, mule, etc. It might happen. So if this is the case that these places are, we have not traveled by air, but we have traveled, but these places are not connected by rails. These connect, these places are not connected even by any other mode of recognized mode of transportation. In that case, we will see that what would have been the deemed rail fare if these places, this origin and this destination, if it would have been connected by rail, how much would be the deemed AC first class rail fare? We will exempt up to that. So if no recognized transportation system exists, deemed first class rail fare, assuming these places are connected, assuming we will assume that these places are connected by rails, right? And you also understand this LTC is given only for transportation purpose. It is not for stay or anything else. Even if at the station, if you will ha uh, hire any, uh, if you give any expense like portrage to the person who carries your luggages, etc. Uh, in Hindi, we call it Kuli. So if you give any portrage expenses, so that is also not covered. This is only for this LTC covers only your transportation expenses. From one station, your traveling expenses, sorry, your traveling expenses from your origin till destination. And this origin till destination should be by shortest aerial route. It should not be circular. It should not be like from Chennai, you are going to Pondicherry first, then you are going to Bangalore, then you are coming to Mumbai or Pune, and then you are visiting somewhere else, then you are you are visiting Delhi, and then you are going somewhere else. No, it should be from your origin till destination and with the shortest aerial route, right? This, these all fares should be the shortest aerial, uh, aerial route fare. Second thing which is important is, LT, okay, LTC can be claimed by the people who are opting for new tax regime, default tax regime, no. For them, it is fully taxable. We are uh, here studying only for those people who are opting optional tax regime, correct? Second thing, we can claim LTC only twice in a block of four years. So we have a block here, from 2022 to 25, this is the current block, 22, 20, year 2020, 23, 24, 25. This is the current block here. You don't have to remember this, but this is the current block here. In this particular block, you can claim LTC only two times. Can I claim it three times? No, only two times. But yes, if any SSE has not claimed their LTC, then they can carry forward this LTC from this block to another block also they can carry forward but maximum only one LTC can be carried forward. Do you remember that? Only one LTC can be, uh, be carried forward and that too should be availed in the very first year of that block, right? So if you have not availed any of the LTC or you have not availed one, you have availed one, you have not availed one. So you can carry only one LTC, only one LTC can be carried to next year and that should be to next block. And that should be availed in the very first year of that block, right? So carry forward, you understand. Family includes same definition, spouse and children, whether dependent or non-dependent, parents, brother and sister, if they are mainly dependent on the employee. Children, the question arises, how many children are allowed? See, if the birth of the child is before 1st October 1998. The birth of the child is before 1st October 1998. There is no problem. Any number of children can go with the employee, with the family, on, uh, with the family trip. They can go uh, enjoy, enjoy the family trip. LTC exemption is allowed for all the children if they are born before 1st October 1998. But in case if you are born after 1st October 1998, and I believe that, I hope that most of the students are of this age group who are born after 1st October 1998. Okay. For you, only two children are allowed. Only two children are allowed, right? Sorry, children. No, children. Only two children are allowed. Okay. And yes, there is an exception. If twins were born after first birth, if after first birth twins were born, then twins would be counted as one because it is um, not employees. No, employees mistake. Okay. Forget about it. So if after the twins were born, after first birth, after first birth, if twins were born, then twins can be counted as one. But if there were already two twins, if there were already two, two twins, there, there were twins and a child was born after that, then again, then twins will be counted as two and that would become, become three, right? But if the twins were born after first child, after first child, because there was a first child and the employee was expecting that there would be one more child, but it happens that Fortunately, it is twins. 
So in that case, he will say, sir, it's not my mistake. Then whose mistake is it? But still, um, uh, if the twins were born after first child, then twins will be counted as one. Okay. So amount of exemption you understand? Actual LTC received, actual amount of expenditure incurred, or the fare which we have discussed, whichever is lower, that would be exempt. Okay. I have already mentioned that only traveling fare from origin to destination by shortest route will be covered. It will not include any local conveyance, portrait, stay expense, etc. That will not be covered under LTC. So this was about perquisites and uh, we understand that also we have discussed this topic. What are tax free perquisites on which the tax is not applicable? The tax perquisite value would be nil. But still, uh, I have accumulated all these points over here. We have already discussed these points here and there, but still, let us revise those points. So we understand that if foreign perquisite is provided, foreign allowances and foreign perquisite, to whom? To Indian citizen. To Indian citizen, if these perquisites are provided by Indian government, and this person is working abroad, let's say he's an Indian citizen working for government of India, government has, uh, government of India has posted that person abroad. So he's a non-resident, let's say. So he serves an Indian embassy, which is situated in the US. So in that case, we will give him, will be giving him basic salary. You understand that this amount, this salary is deemed to arise in India. It would be taxable, although he might be, that person is a non-resident. He has um, been to India for in this year for a very few days. So let's say he's a non-resident, but we understand that salary is deemed to arise in India. So we will give you, uh, give that person basic salary. Basic salary is fully taxable. But if we are giving them any allowances or any perquisites, which we are giving them because they are serve, um, serving abroad. So these foreign perquisites and foreign allowances are exempt. It is tax free. So please don't make it taxable. This is exempt under both the tax regime. Accommodation provided on transfer of the employee for maximum 15 days. I have already discussed in my last lecture that if you are giving, if the employee is getting transferred and the employer is just supporting him, they are giving account accommodation only for 15 days. So still, till 15 days, it is exempt. But if uh, we have given accommodation for more than that, then it will become fully taxable, right? For 16 days, only excess days will be taxable or entire 16 days, entire days will be taxable. Accommodation provided in remote area, we have done that would be exempt. Transportation facility from residence to office and back, only pick and drop facility, that is exempt, we understand. Education and training to the employees, employee, whether it is a one day workshop or it's a one month workshop or any training uh, or education which you are providing to the employee, not to their family member. If they are providing to the family member, then it would be taxable. But if, to, if we are providing it to the employee, let's say we are spending 10,000 rupees or we are spending 10 lakh rupees on the employee education, then it will be exempt, right? So please don't uh, fall in this trap that sir, employer is spending 10 lakh rupees to the employee. Let it be 10 lakh or 20 lakh. Please make it exempt. Okay, for children, for children also it is taxable, but if the children education is provided because of the employment, because of the employment and the value of the perquisite is up to 1000, then it is exempt, right? You understand that also, we have already covered. Interest for your concessional loan, if the amount of the loan is aggregate loan is not more than 20,000, then it is exempt. Remember that? And also if it is more than 20,000, but it is for the medical treatment of the prescribed disease, then again, it would be exempt. We have covered medical facilities, employer hospital, government hospital or prescribed disease and approved hospital. We have already covered health claim, medical claim or accidental insurance. We know it is exempt, but if it is life insurance, it is taxable. Refreshment, snacks, recreational facilities provided to the employees. Meals is taxable, meals is taxable, but refreshments, etc. is fully exempt. If the assessee is following optional tax regime, then meals up to 50 rupees can be exempt in excess of 50, it would be taxable. But if the assessor is following default tax regime, then there is no such amount of 50. And so everything would be taxable. Right? Okay, use of laptop and computer I've already covered this would be exempt and tax on non monetary perquisite paid by the employer. This is also an exempt perquisite. You understand what is tax on non monetary perquisite paid by the employer? Okay, let me explain this also. Let's say there is an employee, Mr. Y, he is working with some company. Let's say this person is working with Hindustan Unilever Limited, HUL is the employer. 
एच यू एल गिवस हिम सैलरी लेट से ऑफ रुपीज वन लाख पर मंथ एंड ऑल्सो एच यू एल गिवस दिम रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन तो प्लीज टेल मी रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन इज प्रोवाइडेड टू द इम्प्लॉय सो इम्प्लॉय इज गेटिंग सैलरी ऑफ वन लाख रुपीज पर मंथ ऑल्सो एंड रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन ऑल्सो सो रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन इज अ परक्यूजेट एंड वट काइंड ऑफ परक्यूजेट इज इट इट इज इन काइंड दैट इज नॉन मॉनिटरी परक्यूजेट इट इज अ नॉन मॉनिटरी परक्यूजेट Okay, so tell me this will become taxable in the hands of Mr. Y. We understand that RFA is taxable, and we know how to will, we will be calculating the value of perquisite also. So this will be become taxable. So his let's say let's say his salary income is one lakh rupees. This is let's say for the convenience purpose, I am use I am taking it as a basic salary. This is one lakh per month is the basic salary which he receives. So how much is the gross salary? Tell me. Gross salary would be we will make a list. How, how what are the things which we are getting? Let's say we are getting basic salary of. वन लाख पर मंथ फॉर ट्वेल्व मंथ इट इज ट्वेल्व लाख प्लस वी आर गेटिंग रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन ऑल्सो वील कैलकुलेट दिस वैल्यू लेट मी एज्यूम द वैल्यू कम्स टू वन लाख ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड वन पॉइंट टू लाख इज द वैल्यू सो दिस इज आर नाउ द टोटल इन द ग्रॉस सैलरी ग्रॉस सैलरी इज थर्टीन पॉइंट टू लाख वी विल गिव स्टैंडर्ड डिडक्शन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड so uh, salary income is uh, come to 12 lakh 70000 let's say there is no other income of any of the of the head from any head so this will become gti let's say there is no standard deduction uh, there is no deduction under chapter 6a also so this will become their total income this will become their total income so it is the employee responsibility this is the employee's responsibility mr y's responsibility because this is his income he has to pay tax on 12 lakh 70000 Right. So, how much would be the tax? Let's say the assessee is following optional tax regime. Okay. If the assessee is following optional tax regime, how much would be the tax? Let's say the tax would be. Let me calculate it quickly. Okay, not so quick. One lakh ninety three thousand five hundred plus. Let me include four percent cess also. This is. Two lakh one thousand two forty. Two lakh one thousand two forty would be the tax liability. And whose responsibility it is? It is the employee's responsibility. Employee is working with H U L. He is getting salary plus he is getting perquisite also non monetary. So his tax liability will be two lakh one thousand two forty, which employee should pay. Okay. But let's say. He reaches out to H U L and he says, "Sir, thank you. You are giving me salary. You are giving me perquisite also." Can you pay tax on this particular perquisite of one point two lakh? Can you pay tax on this also? Let's say H U L says yes. Okay, I will pay. So this is called tax on. This is called tax on non monetary perquisite. And who is paying it? Employer is paying it. Employer is paying it, right? So we say tax on non monetary perquisite paid by the employer. Please tell me this is employee's obligation. This is employee's obligation which is met by employer. So this will become this should become income in the hands of Mr. Y. But this is an exempt perquisite under Section 10. Under Section 10, this is an exempt perquisite. So if employer pays, employer pays tax on non-monetary perquisite. I understand that Y is getting benefit of it. But this is a tax-free perquisite. This is a tax-free perquisite. Okay. Uh, we actually this is a topic which is related to TDS. But still, I am telling you, how much would be the tax tax on non-monetary perquisite? So this is easy. First, we have to calculate the average rate of tax. So how much is the average rate of tax? This is easy. Average rate of tax is. I think you should know this how to calculate average rate of tax. No rocket science. It's easy. So tell tell me how much is the tax liability? Tax liability is two lakh one thousand two forty. And this tax on we have calculated on how much income? On this total income, twelve lakh seventy thousand. So twelve lakh seventy thousand is our total income. Tell me the rate, average rate. Average rate comes to two lakh one thousand two forty divided by twelve lakh seventy thousand. This is fifteen point eight four five. I can say eighteen point fifteen point eight five percent. This is called average rate of tax. This is called average rate of tax, right? So, how much would be the perquisite on tax on non-monetary perquisite? 
So this is 15.85 percent. And tell me how much is the non-monetary prerequisite? It's a rent-free accommodation. One lakh twenty thousand is the non-monetary prerequisite. So where should I write? Let me write it here. So I'm writing tax on non-monetary prerequisite will be. How much is the perquisite value into average rate of tax? Average rate of tax. So perquisite value is one lakh twenty thousand. Understand RFA? And please apply average rate of tax. How much it is? Fifteen point eight five percent. So one lakh twenty thousand into fifteen point eight five percent. This is nineteen thousand zero twenty rupees. So this is tax on non-monetary perquisite. If this tax, this if this nineteen thousand zero twenty rupees, if HUL say okay, we will pay nineteen thousand zero two zero out of this amount and the remaining amount which you can pay. So this is the benefit which employee is getting. So employee is getting benefit of tax on non-monetary perquisite which is paid by employer. This is also benefit, but this is an exempt perquisite. This is an exempt perquisite, right? And if employer will pay more than nineteen thousand, see tax on non-monetary perquisite is nineteen thousand. Only this amount can be exempt. Let's say employer pays twenty-one thousand. Let's say employer pays twenty-one thousand. So how much extra employer has paid? So if I say employer has paid twenty-one thousand, let's say so employer has paid nineteen eighty rupees extra. So this nineteen eighty will be taxable. Only tax on non-monetary perquisite is exempt. Are you all getting this? Only tax on non-monetary perquisite is exempt. If employer is paying excess amount, then it will be taxable. Then one nine eight zero, whatever is the excess, that will be taxable. But only this amount is exempt. And you should also relate this topic with PGVP also because in PGVP also we have the same topic under section forty small a, where we see that if uh, Tax on non-monetary perquisite is paid by the employer. This is a employer expense because HUL because here you can see HUL is paying salary. HUL is also uh, ex ex expending for rent-free accommodation. They might also be now they are paying tax on non-monetary perquisite nineteen thousand something. They are also paying. So this is an expense for the for HUL. Is it an allowable expense? The answer is no. In PGBB we see forty smallest specifically disallow this expense. They will say it will not be allowed in the hands of employer. Why it will not be allowed? Because we understand because it is allowed in the hands of Mr. Y. We have exempted it over here. So this is we see in PGVP also. There is nothing to worry about it. That is an easy part. If you would like to note it down, you can note it. Note this down. Do you want to note it down about tax on non-monetary perquisite? You can pause the video here and you can note it down, please. Okay, so let's come back. So tax on non-monetary perquisites we have completed. Income tax paid by the employer in excess of the above tax will become taxable. I have already discussed if they are paying anything above above that nineteen thousand and so that will become taxable. But up to that amount, it is exempt. Okay, should we start retirement benefits? I think we'll continue this retirement benefit in one more part. Let, let us make one more part for salary. Although in uh, that other in the in English mix lecture, I have all completed it in, in three parts. But I don't know why in your lecture it is uh, extending now. Okay, let me keep it here itself, and we will discuss retirement benefit in our next lecture. Till then, thank you so much. Bye and take care.